within River Cities. Well, we have uh, just a very special uh, time in our service right now, and I know we have some extra guests in our service today, um, but we have a time of baptism, and baptism uh, is something that Scripture teaches us is a step of obedience that we take after we have given our lives to Jesus Christ. And so baptism does not have any saving power in and of itself. Uh, it is a symbol of an inward truth. I often compare it to a wedding band. If you're married, most folks wear a wedding band. Well, that wedding band is not a marriage, but it represents an intangible truth. It represents a covenant of marriage that's been made between two people. And Jesus said that when we put our faith in him for forgiveness of our sins, we experience him as our savior, um, then we want, or he wants us to be baptized in a public way so that everyone who cares to come can see us publicly proclaiming our faith to Jesus. So today we have um, a man who has given his life to Christ. His name is Mark Stambo, and we'd like you to watch this uh, video so that he can communicate best with you why he wants to be baptized today. And I'm here this morning to share my testimony. It all started four years ago when I made a promise to God. I didn't tell anyone about the promise. I had a brother, John, who passed away with pancreatic cancer. John and I always went to every home football game of the Ashland Tomcats. In 2018, in late October, John began telling me at the games about he wasn't feeling well. He had been hurting in his stomach. The day after Thanksgiving is when the doctors told him that he had pancreatic cancer. He passed away 11 days later. Uh, John was a good Christian man, and he is now with Jesus. Four weeks after we buried John, I began hurting in my stomach, just like my brother John. I asked John to, to look up the symptoms of pancreatic cancer. Everything she told me, all the symptoms I was experiencing, I was literally going crazy. I made an appointment with my doctor. While waiting on my appointment, I walked from our back porch to the front porch over and over every day, crying out to God. My doctor's appointment came and the doctor ordered test after test. So many I couldn't begin to remember them all. Everything came back good. This went on for about four months. Most people know that I had a spinal fusion years ago. The doctor suggested I have an MRI. It came back, I had a pinched nerve, and that was causing the pain in my stomach. What a relief. During all this time, starting four years ago, I promised God, if you let me live, I will tell my story and serve you forever. There was one problem. I didn't keep my promise. Over the next four years, I come to church at RCCC with John, and many times, Pastor Larry would preach. At the end, as always, he would give the invitation to accept God. I would stand there and not give in. Now forward four years from when I made my promise in 2018. My 90-year-old mother had a stroke late September of 2022. She did not recover, recover from her stroke and passed away on October 30th. She had come home with hospice care and about three weeks into her care, along with about five of my siblings, were with her in her bedroom. She said, I want all of my kids here. I told her, I told her who was already here, there. She said, no, I want all of them here. She had 13 kids. Two have passed and are in heaven. I told her we would call the rest of them. Everyone arrived. Mom said, I'm going to be here. I'm not going to be here much longer. I'm asking all of you that don't know the Lord to give your life to Jesus. So we can be a family in heaven just like we were here on earth. All my siblings knew Jesus as Savior except me and two of my brothers. At that time, my heart began to beat fast. I knew it was Jesus. <laughs> I 
I leaned over my mom, hugging her and crying out to Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to save me, and he did. I thank you, Mom, for your testimony that day. I want to thank my wife who prayed for me for 45 years. Most of all, thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to live to tell my story. I ask if there's anybody here this morning at the service that if you don't know Jesus, that you would get to know him this morning just like I got to know him. Wow. Mark has a story of what the Lord has done in his life. I just want to challenge you this morning. Do you have a story of what God has done in your life? Mark walked around among us for years and years and years, and I even heard someone say this morning, well, I thought Mark was a Christian just because he was here in church. And some of you come into these... Uh, come into this room and you hear the gospel presented, but you, like Mark, keep pushing the Lord away, keep pushing him away. Maybe today, in seeing Mark and his bravery and his courage uh, has inspired you and will help you reconsider and give your life to the Lord. Uh, you saw the verse there at the end, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. 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 Um, we would love to talk with you if you would like to uh, talk with someone about salvation. Uh, we're going to sing a couple songs of celebration, uh, and uh, Pastor Larry is, is over here, and he, uh, we talked before, and he would love to uh, talk with you, even right now, during the next song. If you want to just make your way over to him, he'll go back to the prayer room with you, and he'd be glad to talk with you and explain the gospel and pray with you this morning. But let me invite you to please stand. <clears throat> you, my God, have saved my soul. I am yours forevermore. I won't be moved of this, I'm sure. You're my God and you saved my soul. 